On July 24th, 2552, a team of Spartans made a discovery that brought humanity's worst nightmares to pass. The Covenant are on reach. It's the Winter Contingency. After almost 30 years of destructive war with the Covenant, after facing setback after setback, loss after loss, the Covenant had finally discovered the planet Reach, humanity's last stronghold before Earth. Both sides knew how cataclysmic of a discovery this was. Humanity knew that if Reach fell, it would only be a matter of time before the Covenant discovered and invaded Earth, which would almost certainly mark the end of our race. And the Covenant knew that Reach was of grave importance to their mortal enemy, but more so that it was a planet rich with holy relics, left behind by the gods their galactic genocide was driven by. To defend their military stronghold, humanity deployed everything at their disposal on Reach to stop the Covenant, including a litany of Spartans tasked with asset denial, assassinations of Covenant VIPs, reconnaissance, and just about every military operation under the sun. Among these Spartans were Noble Team, a squad of six highly unique super soldiers who fought all across the planet during its final days, a fight that they knew was a losing one. But during their escapades, the legendary Spartans of Noble Team were stalked by one of the most fanatical sects of elite zealots in the entire Covenant, a squad handpicked by the supreme commander of the Long Night of Solace, Ro Baratami, to carry out the will of the Covenant's extremist ministry of fervent intercession. These elites are known as the Devoted Sentries, and this is the story of how they hunted and assassinated Noble Team during the Fall of Reach. Something else the Devoted Sentries were hunting down were my official Flood-themed PCs, made in partnership with Apex Gaming PCs. That's right, we created three different tiers of Flood-themed PC builds. The Pure Form PC, the Gravemind PC, and the ultra-powerful Primordial PC fit to run Halo and any other game at blistering frame rates and gorgeous resolutions. So if fleeing the devoted sentries at absurd frame rates sounds good to you, then head to the link in the description and make sure you use code hidden at checkout for up to 250 bucks off your order. The Covenant religion was as devout as it was expansive and was teeming with different sects and ministries, but few were as righteous as the Ministry of Fervent Intercession. Literally meaning Ministry of Intense Praying, they were arguably one of the most radical subsects of the Covenant religion, which was already an extremist hegemony. The Ministry was a semi-monastic organization focused on securing what the Covenant called reliquaries, planets that were teeming with foreigner relics. They believed this to be their divine purpose in life, to secure that which their gods had left behind, and as such, the Ministry became famous for the sheer number of fanatical elite zealots within its ranks. Their fanaticism made them highly efficient at defending foreigner sites during the war with humanity, although their independent commanders often paid little mind to orders that didn't deal directly with the safety of their god's relics, or that didn't pertain to you subscribing right now. Do it. It's, I mean, it's, the zealots are ordering me to do this. I'm not actually doing this myself as a zealot behind me, ah! making me wield this, holding a sword to my back, asking you to subscribe. So please subscribe right now for, for the safety of me, I'm, I'm begging you. The Ministry was held in awe by many in the Covenant, and their fleets could call upon resources and volunteers directly from the colonies and even other ministries as a result of their prestige, and the force of ancient writs that dated back to the founding of the Covenant itself. There wasn't a single ministry in the entire Covenant that had as much pull as this ministry. But in some rare cases, zealots of the fervent intercession could be called upon by other fleets or commanders in cases of rare yet extreme religious importance, and in 2552, Supreme Commander Ro Baratami did just that. He led his fleet of Valiant Prudence into the Beta Eridani system, where they lay waste to a human colony, which it turned out was home to a number of foreign artifacts, which, when passed through a luminary, revealed another planet that was even richer with artifacts. This planet was Reach. Aboard his supercarrier, the Long Night of Solace, Ro led his fleet to Reach, but not before handpicking a highly specialized unit of zealots from the Ministry of Fervent Intercession to accompany him to the planet and retrieve the holy assets. This unit was the Devoted Sentries, some of the Ministry's most elite zealots, and they were to act as Baratami's own asset retrieval and strike force. 
Acting as their commander aboard the Long Night of Solace, Barrett's army dispatched the devoted sentries down to the surface of Reach in the dead of night, as some of the first few warriors to set foot on the doomed human stronghold. They were sent to a relay station outside the town of Visegrad to disrupt human communications, masking the Covenant's approach, but more specifically, to retrieve only data about the excavation of foreign artifacts that their luminary had detected on the planet. There's no other way of saying it, the devoted sentries turned Visegrad into a bloodbath. Villagers who lived near the relay and scientists who worked at the outpost were slaughtered, and when local UNSC command dispatched a team of army troopers to investigate, they too were butchered. Those who survived the night were terrified, hiding away in their homes and farms, hoping the monsters wouldn't catch them. In knocking out the relay station, the zealots had turned the entire valley into a dark zone, which prompted Colonel Holland to send Noble Team in to investigate. Initially, the attacks were believed to have been conducted by insurrectionists, given their heavy presence on Reach, but the Spartans quickly encountered the true culprits, and humanity's worst nightmare became a reality. The Covenant were on Reach. When they eventually made it to the command station of the Relay, a zealot field marshal, likely the leader of the sentries on the ground, jumped out of hiding with two other sentries in tow, ambushing Noble. They kidnapped the last surviving army trooper that was sent in to investigate the disturbance and descended further into the Relay station, but Noble pursued. The two sentry zealots stood their ground and held Noble off for long enough to allow the field marshal to escape, and although the zealots did fall in battle to the demons, they likely allowed the field marshal to relay information about Oni's excavation data back to Baratami aboard the Long Night of Solace. When Noble reported their encounter with the Zealots to Dr. Horsey, she was aghast at Carter not issuing an order to pursue the Field Marshal, revealing that Oni believed the Covenant dispatched small teams of nimble elites, typically Zealots like these, specifically to recover artifacts that are important to their religion. As far as we know, Oni had no knowledge of either the Devoted Sentries or the Ministry of Fervent Intercession at this point, but Horsey did have a hunch that they were after the data from Oni's excavation site. The Sentries then weren't encountered by humanity for roughly two and a half weeks. They were likely convening with Baratami aboard the Long Night of Solace and possibly even Ministers of Fervent Intercession too as to how best to proceed given the information that they discovered. Oh, and if it isn't clear enough already, then the only excavation data that the sentries were after pertains to that massive foreigner ship that is hidden in the ice shelf beneath Sword Base. The next sighting of one of the devoted sentries was on August 12th during the UNSC's assault on the Covenant's invasion force at Sherdock Ridge. As Noble Six punched through the Covenant's defenses, getting closer to the spire, he passed through a BXR mining facility, long abandoned by its workers, but now held as a checkpoint by the Covenant, and to Noble's surprise, a zealot, one of the devoted sentries, seemed to be commanding the forces at the mine. Cat marked the sentry as an HVT, and Noble Six very quickly moved in to neutralize it, sending another one of the warriors screaming to its gods. After Noble Six and George successfully took out their target spire, Baratami, likely enraged at his invasion force being dealt a heavy blow, brought his camoed supercarrier close to the planet and decloaked it launching its glassing beam directly through the UNSC Grafton and obliterating it, along with all of the local region. This raw display of power, however, although it may have seemed like a flex to Baratami at the time, actually proved to be a fatal mistake. Off the back of Baratami's extreme flexing, Noble devised Operation Uppercut to neutralize the supercarrier. To them, if the Solace was destroyed, then they'd essentially beheaded the fleet that had arrived at Reach and to a degree, the UNSC could declare victory. Operation Uppercut was approved by UNSC command and carried out. Noble Six, George, and several Marine Sabre pilots boarded one of the fleet of Valiant Prudence's corvettes, the Ardent Prayer. They stormed its bridge, slaughtered its crew, and set it on a refueling course for the Long Night of Solace with a slipspace drive on board, rigged to be detonated as a bomb upon contact with the supercarrier. Although George sacrificed himself to see it through, Operation Uppercut was overwhelmingly successful. The fleet of Valiant Prudence, the Long Night of Solace, and its fleet and shipmaster, Ro Baratami, the commander of the Devoted Sentries, was assassinated in a spectacular fashion. But just because the one who'd handpicked them to come to Reach was dead, did not mean that the Devoted Sentries' job was done. Far from it. 
These were some of the most righteous, extreme zealots in the entirety of the Covenant, who valued the relics left behind by their gods infinitely higher than any mortal being, Fleetmaster or not. And so, the sentries continued to operate on Reach until the very end. After all, they had one of their god ships to find, a landmark discovery should it be made. Had humanity's naval victory been longer lasting, they likely would have struggled fulfilling such a goal. But given that the Arbiter's fleet of particular justice arrived at Reach mere seconds after Baratami's fleet was annihilated and dwarfed it in size, there was no struggle. Humanity's next encounter with the sentries came nine days after the Covenant's apparent defeat, and the state of the war was so dire that it was as if the, at the time, tremendous victory had never happened. In a war-torn New Alexandria, as countless Covenant ships moved into the city to rain down superheated plasma, the sentries would once again rear their fierce mandibles, with fatal consequences. The glassings began on the outskirts of the city, but as they got closer to the centre, Noble were taken off guard, forced to flee to a glassing bunker beneath the city's streets as the air was filled with the preemptive radiation of a glassing beam. In their frantic dash to the bunker, the Spartans let their guard down. Moving through the rubble of a once proud city, the field marshal that Carter had ordered Noble not to pursue at Visegrad made an appearance once more. Oblivious to the Spartans, a phantom had moved in the entrance to the bunker, and from its troop bay stood the field marshal, needle rifle in hand, who, with one clean shot, assassinated Kat. Because of the glassing, Hermione's shields were powered down, which made the shot an easy one to land for a zealot this skilled. With no time to mourn, the Spartans hurried her body into the shelter, and the field marshal's phantom retreated as the glassing beams descended. Getting ever lighter, when Noble made their way back to Sword Base to retrieve an asset of extreme importance from Dr. Horsey for extraction, they finally laid eyes upon what it was that only were excavating that the devoted sentries were after. A gigantic foreigner ship, frozen within the Babkatha ice shelf beneath Oni Sword Base. Although the devoted sentries weren't visibly present at the Covenant's assault on Horsey's lab, it's safe to assume that it was their operation. It's also safe to assume that although capturing the ship in its entirety would have made a grand prize to return to their ministers, the sentries were after a specific piece of data within the ship, which Cortana had discovered and was privy to. As far as we know, at this point, nobody knew what this data actually was, but obviously now with hindsight, we know that this data was in fact the coordinates to Alpha Halo. No wonder it was so sought after by the sentries. As what remained of Noble Team rushed to deliver Cortana's fragment with the data to the Pillar of Autumn, the devoted sentries pursued, and the two came to one final clash at the Azod shipbreaking yard, where the Pillar of Autumn was docked. As Emil manned the Onega Mac Cannon to defend the Autumn and Keys Pelican, a CCS cruiser ominously moved in above, and with its arrival, the devoted sentries once again revealed themselves. Leaping from a phantom above the mass driver, two sentry zealots surrounded the cockpit. One went in for a quick kill, but Emil replied with two 8-gauge magnum buckshots to the face, one breaking the elite shields, and the other turning its skull to paste. The other, unbeknownst to Emil, came in from behind and impaled the Spartan to the chest with his sword, lifting him off the ground, but again, the ever-resilient Emil replied by drawing his kukri and stabbing it straight through the sentry's neck, taking both assailants out with him. With the mass driver now unmanned and the CCS cruiser moving even closer to the Autumn, Noble Six gave up his ticket off reach to defend Keys and the Autumn's retreat. On his way up to the cannon, however, he encountered the biggest force of devoted sentries yet, three sentry zealots led by the field marshal. It was a tough fight, but not even a field marshal of the devoted sentries was able to overcome a hyper-lethal vector. With the squad and its leader dead, Six took out the cruiser and allowed the Autumn to escape safely, leaving him deserted on the dead planet of Reach. As the Spartan made his final stand in the ruins of the shipbreaking yard, he was ultimately overwhelmed by Covenant, and in an act of final poetic justice, it was a zealot of the devoted sentries who dealt the killing blow. But despite their assassination of the demons of Noble Team, which would be considered an honourable duty, the devoted sentries still failed in their duties for the Ministry of Fervent Intercession. Regardless of the fact that the Arbiter's fleet followed the Autumn and discovered the relic that the sentries were after, Alpha Halo, 
the ring itself was still destroyed. In their failure to stop the Autumn from escaping, the sentries had doomed one of the holiest of all relics their gods had left behind. What happened to the devoted sentries after this and after the fall of the Covenant is unknown. It's assumed that their ministry fell with the Covenant, but with how devout the Zealots were, it's unlikely that they just gave up their faith. I wouldn't be surprised if they're still out there somewhere, devoted to hunting down the relics of the gods that they likely still worship and slaying any who seek to stop them. And that, my friends, is the lore of the Devoted Sentries, the secret elites who hunted and assassinated Noble Team during the Fall of Reach. You know, I always love covering the lore of things that are kind of hidden in plain sight in the games, but don't get much attention in them, because once you know that lore and you go back and replay the games, now when you go back and play Reach again and you see a zealot, you're gonna be like, oh, I know who you are and I know why you're here. Also, I know that you're the one that assassinated Cat, you bastard. Very cool, just make sure you give that field marshal one extra tea bag for Cat. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you sub and like if you haven't done already. Somehow, if the order of the zealots early on didn't make you sub, then Maybe me ordering you to sub <laughs> will make you sub. So I want to give a huge thank you to all of my amazing patrons for all the continued support over there as per usual. And thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next one. <laughs>